My name is Finn. Won't you sit down? Thank you. My sister was on the point of arranging these flowers. I don't know if your man explained the situation to you. He did his best, but I'm afraid I couldn't understand him. You see, Morgan is dumb. The title says it all. You just don't know it yet. The Old Dark House follows a group of men and women running from the reins of the mother of all storms into situations in a creepy old house. Awful situations that will soon have them running upstairs, downstairs, and out the front door. Sit down, have a glass, and a potato, and revel in the warmth of the fire. Don't mind the house. It's old, so it knows better than to bother you. Most of the time. 1932's The Old Dark House is the prototype to many horror items to come after it. The movie contains nighted lands, rain, lightning, mysterious mansions, electricity being cut. I could go on. It's all there. In this mansion, strangers gather to be hosted by strange family members, and there are even stranger secrets hiding somewhere upstairs or around the corner, just past the creepy butler. It's all here, I assure you. Directed by James Whale of Frankenstein fame, along with the gorgeous and interesting cinematography by Arthur Edison, also of Frankenstein fame, and a script by R.C. Sheriff and Ben Levy, here we have more than enough cinematic talent to deliver a great movie. But the real flames in the dark of this movie are the actors. I particularly liked Boris Karloff, who is of course a gigantic imposing man of few words. In this role, he's just a couple bolts short of a full-on Frankenstein's monster. He's actually got a surprising arc in this film. I also enjoyed the nutty brother and sister host, and I really liked Brimber Wills as Saul, who delivers some incredibly creepy dialogue in his brief role. Flames are really knives. They're cold, my friend. Sharp and cold as snow. They burn like ice. The rest of the cast features many interesting actors. Even Charles Lawton in his first Hollywood role, who also appeared in The Canterville Ghost, another movie I've reviewed and enjoyed. Now that you're seated and fed, might I tell you how I regard this movie? It's definitely a fun film. It has a lot of successful developments in terms of atmosphere and pacing. I did find some issues though with the overall story and tone of the movie, which stumble through the dark at some points. That's okay though. You just have to be mindful. Those old floors are known to sometimes change their ways. The movie doesn't really seem to decide if it's a comedy, a romance, or a horror. For instance, the opening has a considerable amount of friendly talk punctuated with the jabbing humor of British conversation and banter. Then there's a romance that takes place and swoons to a literal marriage proposal in the course of one night. It's a tad ridiculous, but not as ridiculous as when a female actor is passed off as an old male via makeup because they didn't have an actor to do the role. He sounds really weird. She sounds really weird. That's confusing. It's a bit of a quirk that I honestly like more now than disapprove of. So there's a little bit of everything thrown in, and not all of it is needed to make a movie work, but none of it really makes the movie bad. In my opinion, the horror elements work the best of any. The creepy, wistful, bitter nostalgia of Ava Moore's Rebecca is punctuated superbly by the camera shots of her broken reflection as she talks. That's fine stuff, a little rot. That's finer stuff still, but it'll rot too in time. Don't! How dare you! The way she speaks to a young Margaret about how her flesh will rot too is disturbing, to say the least. Pyromaniac Saul's delivery of a speech about fire is also a highlight of the movie, my favorite. So bright, with fury and insanity, it threatens to burn up the lighthearted comedy and hijinks from before in the movie. And that might not have been a bad thing, actually. I believe if the movie had stuck to these elements and maintained the horror it conjures in its finale elsewhere, I bet it could have been a bright, bright bit of memorable horror 
recognized as one of the first movies to demonstrate what would probably become the most generic item in horror, creepy old houses, and what lies within. Instead, it was mostly derided at release and forgotten about, nearly lost until it was rediscovered in a vault in 1968. So, the old dark house exists in sort of a strange limbo. The lights are on. The rooms are filled with dust. The conversation is pleasant, but nobody's home. A movie that represents so much of what was to come, but missed the chance to be seen for what it is. A great, creepy, funny, strange, piercing bit of horror comedy. I suppose the fact that such things can happen, that great movies can go forgotten while having so much of their bits and pieces remembered and carried on, is probably the scariest thing you'll find in the old dark house. What parts of you will remain after other pieces have rotted away? I give this old dark house four creepy butler Boris Karloffs out of five. If this is the last house on your movie watching lane, go in. All of these things are designed to frighten a monkey.